My question more isn't about what your answer is to me. And I just want to understand, I just want to really listen to you kind of ramble about it, but goals, goal setting specifically. Well, here's the thing. As life comes to you, or in some cases it feels like when life comes at you, you have this natural synthesizing of it, which causes you to launch a rocket of desire. And in essence, at the very elementary understanding, that is setting a goal. In other words, I prefer that to this. So step one is all about that. And of course, the goal or the preference that you have established is becoming more, even beyond your comprehension, because it's very difficult in this goal setting, even in whatever evolved way of goal setting that anyone might mean. The thing about these intentions moving forward and law of attraction getting hold of them and responding, because when you ask it is always given, is this law of attraction gathering of the cooperative components factor that we were talking about earlier, so that your goals are actually more all-inclusive of everything that you are and everything you want, even the intentions or goals, you might say, that you had coming into this physical experience. The becoming of this vortex of creation, it includes so much that none of you, if we pressed you to try to describe what's in there, actually could. Because it is so comprehensive, and it is so big, and it matters so much, and it is about so many things. So what we are encouraging is, rather than goal setting in the traditional way that so many motivational speakers are talking about it. We want you to realize that you have already asked and that part's done. You've got enough in your vortex to keep you busy for 20 or 30 lifetimes. You've done that and step two has taken place too because the source attention upon it has caused it to gestate until it is ready to come out and play with you. It's being revealed all the time. It's just ready for you to realize it. And so Instead of goal setting, what we're talking about is receiving mode receiving. But what happens, now think about this. You're really going to like this. You've all got the sense. You have to have had it because we've said it 25 times already here today. So the stuff's in the vortex. is gestating and it's ready for you. The only question is, are you in the receiving mode? Let's say you are. You meditated or you were around somebody that was really feeling great and doesn't matter, you're under the influence of something and you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on. So you are in the receiving mode and then an idea occurs to you and you say, oh man, do I have a goal. But as it comes, suddenly you're wanting to write that down. But think how much happened before you began to receive it. If we can help you make the differentiation between step one and step three, then you'll understand goal setting in the way we mean it. Because really, you've been setting the goals, but your realization that you want it is usually when most people acknowledge that they've got a goal. A lot happened before then, and then bam, it's like the baby in the womb, not much to play with and not much to do about really. It's all sort of taking care of itself, but then it's born. Now you've got a goal. And so as that vibration turns to the thought and you have these impulses about what you want, that is so delicious. But where it goes screwy with people is that as the desire comes into their realization, they get too involved in how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, where it's going to be, who's going to bring it. And they introduce a lot of questions to which they don't have answers and then they lose their connection to it. Where if they wouldn't do that then it would continue to be. In other words, when you want it, it is. You just got to let it be. And there's something about what most people do with goal setting that puts them more in the dissatisfaction mode than in the satisfaction mode. Because so often setting the goal causes them to measure where they are in relationship to the goal, which means they're looking on the void or the absence or the gap between. Where your inner being is never looking on the absence of the goal, your inner being is looking at the fullness of it and inspiring you to the activities that make it fuller and fuller and fuller and fuller and fuller. So words are just words and they don't matter very much. And maybe some people are using the word goal and they mean something different than what we have just implied. I think more professionally, I get caught up in, not necessarily caught up, but I have, I love the way that you speak about goals and about setting intentions for your life. And the way that professionally I've been shown is the correct way or the correct way to some sort of success is to write them down and to go through this process of saying, I want to be here in five years. I want to be there in 10 years. 
And that to me has always felt disruptive to coming into an alignment first and then just allowing it. So what I'm asking, is it really okay to just let myself be happy, forget the goals and just go for it and let it happen? Yes, 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 yes. But this is why we want to clarify something that you said. Is it really all right for me to just be happy and forget the goals? And we're going to take a little issue with that because your inner being didn't forget them. And when you think about them, you're usually contradicting them. Did you hear that differentiation? We're not teaching you to give up on your desires. You can't. We're teaching you to let your desires manifest. And there's something about keeping score, keeping track of where you are that doesn't let them manifest because it keeps activating where you are, which is the opposite of what's in the process of becoming. Oh, you have helped us. You have hit right upon the thing that trips humans up. The reality of what is prevents you from moving into more satisfying reality. What is, is way too compelling to you. You measure it, you compare it, you talk about it, you pigeonhole it, you insure it, you do all those things with what is, and it prevents you from the journey into the more and the more and the more. Hmm. When you think about what you want and why you want it, you're usually in a much more allowing place than when you think about how you're going to get it and when it's going to come and who's going to bring it and that sort of thing. Now, there's something else that you said. We're really happy to have this conversation. This matters. If you've been listening to us for a while, you may have listened to us in environments like this or read books that we've written as we've offered everything that we could find in the moment that would cause you to be more allowing. That's always our intention, to get you to be more allowing of what you're asking for. Every process that we've ever written, and there are lots of them, are about you getting into a place where you're allowing what you're asking for more. Today, we're not talking so much about those processes where I want this and I don't want this, so I'll just make myself think about this. Well, usually, when you mean to think about this, you're thinking about this, because whatever's the most active within you is what you're going to think about. So we've written lots of processes to help you move that. But there is a much easier way, which is quiet your mind so that's not active, and then the only mind that is active is your inner being that already knows what you want and where you are in relationship to it and how to move toward it, step by step by step. Did you follow that? Your inner being knows. And so if your discontent thought isn't active, and it won't be when you're meditating, then you'll practice the vibration of what it is you want. And the more you practice the vibration of what you want, and the less you practice the vibration of its absence, then the more you allow more of what you want. It's just a natural product of the way the laws of the universe work. However, once you are in alignment with who you are, oh, thinking about it in greater detail is so satisfying. So our answer to your question is, if you are under the influence of your inner being and you are tuned in, tapped in, turned on, you can turn your attention toward those delicious ideas of what you want and when you want it and all it will do is exhilarate you more and you'll feel more and more and more satisfaction as you think about in five years I'll be here and in 10 years I'll be here or whatever. If you're under the influence of what your inner being knows, then every bit of that will be delicious to you. But if you're under the influence of not having enough and you're setting those goals, then the exact opposite happens. Ooh. All right. So I've said something really, really big here, and that is know what you're under the influence of. We have offered to Jerry and Esther, and they have found artists, and their publisher found magnificent artists, and we've created six card decks. We call them well-being cards. The publisher calls them affirmation cards. And we've been saying for a long time, when you affirm from inside the vortex, it's such a good idea. When you affirm from outside the vortex, it just digs you into your hole deeper. For example, if you'd meditated or been making love or been in love or been swimming or been at the beach or whatever, so that you're under the influence of source energy, you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and you were to sit with any one of those decks, there's six different ones, and you were to just leaf through them and just sort of absorb with your eyes the beauty of the art because the art is vibrationally accurate in every case we made sure and read the words from your state of alignment the momentum of your alignment would increase and you would feel satisfaction becoming more and more and more and more and more and more of what you are wanting regarding the subjects these card decks are on different subjects of desire 
regarding the subject would come into your experience. But if you are feeling lackful about something and you decide you're going to use these cards, these vibrationally accurate, carefully created by source energy cards that are meant to take you from where you are to the heights of your satisfaction. If you sit with them in a needy place and look through them, they will annoy you. <laughs> and you know that from your own goal setting experience. Sometimes it's just annoying to even contemplate it. Well, that's because you're not under the influence of what you want. You're under the influence of where you stand in relationship to it. And you, it's like pushing a noodle. You cannot get there from there. It's attraction, 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 attraction. So doesn't that follow? If this is all about the law of attraction, that as I reach for satisfaction, then I attract more satisfaction. And as I attract more satisfaction, then I attract more satisfaction until I'm in the receiving mode where I have impulses about all things. Goal setting, you can't help it. Life makes you ask, just does. And we're not ever asking you to give up on anything that you've asked. We're not asking you to let go of your goals. We're asking you to let go of your resistance to your goals. And in some cases, that means you can't think about that subject because you've practiced that subject so solidly that when that subject comes up, that's right where you go. But when you start asking yourself little by little, is this a satisfying thought? Is this a satisfying thought? When you think about something that you've been goal setting about and you think about how it will feel to be there and the whole thought feels satisfying, you just relax into it and it feels so good makes you smile, even puts ripples on your skin a little bit, that feeling of enthusiasm, you know that what's happened is you've just joined your inner being's perspective about how you're doing. And the more of that you do, not only the better you feel, but the greater the momentum will be and the faster the unfolding will be toward those things. And after a while, you'll reach a place where you won't be gauging the distance between where you are and where you're wanting to be because you'll have this clear understanding that there's always going to be something more for you, that no matter where you're standing, there is more. And it is moving toward the more vibrationally that is the exhilaration of life. And yes, the things will follow. But someday we are certain that we will meet with you, maybe even some of you who are actually sitting here in this room and we will be having de-manifestation seminars because the things that you think you want for the satisfaction are just the excuse you use to get into the mode of satisfaction. It's the feeling of source energy flowing through you and the entire universe responding to your clear focus that is the life that you want to live. And yes, dollars will follow and magnificent things will follow and wonderful experiences will follow and freedom will follow and all the things that you've incrementally been asking for will follow. So it's like this. You're ready for this. Maybe you are, maybe you're not, but we're ready for you to be ready for this. So we're going to offer it to you anyway. Some of you are ready for this. So details of life, put specific details into your vortex. Let's say car, house, girl, children, whatever it is in, 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 in. So then cooperative components are gathered and it becomes more, 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 and perhaps even not recognizable. Doesn't matter to you though, because you're not specifically trying to make this happen and this happen and this happen. Life's caused it to happen. Abraham, is it really true that I can simply just feel good and that is enough? Yeah, so that's what you're doing. You're feeling good. You're feeling satisfaction. Your vortex has been building and building and ideas are flowing to you. Now, every one of those details that you put in, that you can't maybe feel because you can't comprehend the way they've morphed and what they've become, but they're all in there. As thoughts begin occurring to you and you begin following the trail, the specifics of every single thing you put in there is going to weave itself in to the satisfaction that you're living as it begins to unfold. But if you are so determined that that is going to instantly become that, then you're going to miss all of this and all of this and all of this and all of this and, of this and those little pieces are not as satisfying as they could be. In fact, if you could get there at all. That was pretty heavy duty. We're going to give you another statement that will help you understand what we just said. If this time-space reality has the wherewithal to inspire a desire, this time-space reality has the wherewithal to deliver the goods. So if a specific thing has caused you to create a specific desire, you're going to feel the extraordinary magnificence of the specifics of that. And it's going to surprise and delight you when it comes.